Hello, I'm Richard Allen with the Capillary Wood Turners. I'm going to make an offset mirror today. I'm going to use a two inch mirror and a three inch block of wood. Start off with a block of wood. This is a block, block of uh, figured soft maple. And it's uh, big enough for a three inch mirror, but uh, I'm going to use a two inch mirror on this because I want to offset the mirror. So first what I do is find the center of the block and I do that by just marking marking the center all four sides and then I'll use a center punch to punch the middle. At this point I want to inspect the wood slightly to see if there's a, a more interesting area in the wood because I want the more interesting area of the wood to remain while the less interesting area of wood uh, disappears. So if the mirror is offset this way then I'm going to want to use it looks to me like using this part of the wood here would be best. So the mirror takes up this much space, that happens to be 7 eighths of an inch, and I want to have about a quarter inch of wood left over so I can move over, what's that, um, about a half inch. So if I move the center over a half inch, that'll be my new center is that point right there. And looking at the piece of wood, I want to preserve this. So I want to come to this side. And it doesn't have to be on this center line. The squares go away when you turn it around. So I just want to have it offset from here that much. So I'll put a point there as well. So now I have two center points. I'm going to be using primarily this bowl gouge. This is a glazer bowl gouge that was sold by Packard Woodworks years ago. I like it because it's short and it allows me to maneuver really well. I'm going to use this little gouge that was also sold by uh, Packard Woodworks. It's a little uh, spindle gouge. I'll use a little parting tool because I like to have nice sharp corners on the recess for the mirror because I'm going to be chucking into that. I'm going to use this Bosch tool. It's a pointed tool to put some rings in. And I might put a bead in. I'll use this Ashley Isles beading parting tool or beading tool. I know we don't sand, but I'm going to sand anyway, and I'll sand with uh, 220, 320, and then I move on to Abra Lore, Abra Lawn, and I start off with 180, which really isn't 180, but it uh, polishes up the wood nicely, and 360 and 500 and 1,000. I'm going to use gloves when I finish, disposable gloves because I don't want the finish to transfer into my skin. And I use these gun patches to apply the finish. They're small, disposable, cheap, and they apply the finish really well. For the finish, I'm going to use a friction polish. So let's make this piece of wood round. Now notice I don't go all the way across. The reason I don't go all the way across is I don't want splinters. So now that the wood is round, we're ready to offset the for the mirror. And we put that uh, mark in before. And we'll center it on that. I'm going to turn the speed down a bit at least to start, because that's going to be flying around pretty good.
It looks good. So we're cutting the recess for the mirror. And the first thing I do is try to get the right size. And this for me is a trial and error process to see if I'm at two inches or not. And for my sizing, I use the mirror rather than measuring because the mirror is the thing that's got to fit in there. It's not two inches, it's the mirror. So I get out a mirror and I actually set it on the recess to see how close I am. And I got to get bigger. Okay, so we need to continue sizing this until we get the right size. And check that. And it looks like we have the right size now. So now we're worried about depth. I like to have my mirror sit a little bit below the wood. So if somebody turns it over on the mirror side, it won't scratch up the mirror. So I'm, I'm, going, I'm worried about depth and I'm also worried about the shoulder here so I get a good grip on it with a chuck. To get that shoulder right, that should get the shoulder right. Now let's get rid of some material. I'm going to use my little bowl guy for that. Just speed it up a little. Now I'm not real concerned about having a perfectly flat bottom. I want to have a fairly flat bottom. I'm going to use a an adhesive that has a bit of body to it and it's going to fill up any irregularities in the bottom. I need to turn away enough of the center so that when I mount it uh, the whole disc the center will appear, all the width that's in the center will be within the recess as it spins around. Boy that sounds complicated, but what it really amounts to is if I were to mount it like that and I would turn away this wood. If, I, if I'm cutting right here, am I going to hit here? And so that's why I want to make this small enough so that's not an issue. I have this really small tool that allows me to get in tight spaces. And that should be good. So at this point we're going to want to uh, finish off the face of the uh, mirror. Um, we're never going to be able to get back to this face. This is the only time we're going to be able to do it. So now's the time when you sand and do whatever it is that you're going to do to that mirror. I'm going to use 220 grit. I buy these in quarter sheets and I like to fold them in thirds because that gives me a little bit of body there. My hands don't get as uh, hot that way. I'm going to go 320. We're getting foggy in here to get a nice smooth surface. And then I'll go with the uh, Abrilon. Start off with the 180. Go to 360, 
500 and the 1,000. That gives us a nice uh, surface there. Next thing I do is I chuck it from the outside. Do we have a three jaw chuck? Uh, number three chuck? We don't have one with number three jaws? I'll let you go, Stephanie. So now we need to get rid of that center part that gave us the offset. And to do that, I just chuck the uh, mirror blank uh, from the outside. So we changed jaws, we changed chucks, and we got the mirror blank uh, mounted in there. And it's real hard to see what you're doing, but you get the idea. We want to get rid of that little centerpiece there. I took care of that. So we're all set. So now it's a matter of thinning this down. That's just too big a mirror, thickness wise. We also have put some slight marks in it when we got rid of the. Uh, the edge, I'm hoping those will sand out. So most of them are going to make this a whole lot thinner. And that's about the right thickness. We'll taper that down a little bit so it looks pretty. Because we like pretty. and just hog away the material. That thickness looks pretty good, and there's a slight um, bevel to that, so I like the way that looks too. We need to get rid of that center portion, so we have to move the tailstock out of the way. Frank, you want to have this thing rock when it sits on its backside because then it's easier to pick up and I really like that idea. So I've made this sort of rock just a little bit. It's a matter of sanding it now. The curly maple, I like to do a double dye process with that to make that curl just jump out even more. And so to do that, I picked two colors. This time I picked a green and a uh, yellow. And use the dark color first because if you use the light color, the dark color is just going to include it. So using the dark color first. That doesn't look very dark. Well, you'll get the effect. Let's get it done. 
Okay, so then we let that dry. And it's water, so it doesn't take long for it to dry. And I usually speed up the process slightly. And mostly I'm applying heat here, along with a paper towel. And that'll get that uh, nice and dry. And you can already see the grain pops more just by putting the one color on there. So that's water based, so it's raised the grain, so I like to knock that down. And knock that down with 180 uh, Abernet. But what I actually want to do is I want to get rid of all the color that I can. And I want the only color to show is the color that's falling into the grain. So we sand pretty heavy there. And you can see there's still color here, but there's no color here where it's flat. So now it's time to apply the other color to this, and I've chosen a uh, yellow. I kind of like this yellow. It looks orange, but it's actually yellow. Okay. We're going to use Doctor's Woodshop uh, High Build Friction Polish. It gives a nice glossy finish. It has uh, wax and shellac and walnut oil. I just recently got this finish. I've been trying it out on some earring stands. I really like the uh, the way it goes on and the way it looks. I like to put a coat on without it rotating first, make sure I get some finish on the whole thing. And then it is a friction polish, so you do need to apply with a little bit of pressure to generate that heat, to get all those little wax molecules pointed in the same direction, which you end up giving you your nice gloss. And that's, uh, that's a pretty good fish, but I like to put on two or three coats. He recommends putting on seven. I'm not quite so sure about seven. And we'll use the paper towel to get that heat on there again. And that's a nice gloss finish. I would have done the same to this side before I flipped it over. Would have done the same dyeing and the same sanding and the same finish and everything that I did on here. And then it's a matter of, of fixing the mirror and maybe polishing up the mirror. Mm -hmm. And it's done. And you can see how the offset really adds a little visual interest to the whole, whole thing.